Now it is finally time to explore in more detail one of the most fascinating cities of the ancient world, Alexandria. We have already explored Rome from many different angles, ranging from its urban makeup to how it changed over the centuries to its very high population density. And we have also done the same with the new Rome, Constantinople. But long before Constantinople and even before Rome, Alexandria was the largest, most prosperous and most densely populated large city of antiquity and in this video we shall analyze this magnificent city of the ancient world in great detail. Already in one of the first videos on this channel, I was talking about the extremely high population density of ancient Rome. Rome had a city area of 14 square kilometers encompassed within the Aurelian walls and very likely a few more square kilometers outside of the city walls, totaling at around 20 square kilometers. We know that Rome's peak population was between 800,000 and 1.2 million people. So the median value, 1 million, would yield an incredibly high population density of 50,000 people per square kilometer. We see that currently there is only one city on this planet with a higher population density than this, namely Malé, the capital of the Maldives. Ancient Constantinople had similarly also a very high population density. Encompassed within the Theodosian walls, there was a population area of 14 square kilometers. However, not all that area was populated and we can assume that maybe 10 to 12 square kilometers were populated. The estimates for Constantinople's population vary a lot, but according to Cyril Mango, a historian and expert on the layout and urban structure of Constantinople, the city had a peak population of 600,000 people. So we are looking at a population density of 50 to 60,000 people per square kilometer, similar to and maybe a bit higher than that of Rome. But long before Constantinople was founded in AD 330 and even before Rome became a world power, there was another city in the ancient world that must have been absolutely incredible. Of course, I am talking about Alexandria. Alexandria was founded by Alexander the Great in 331 BC in an area that was very likely already inhabited in some form before that. Human activity can be traced back in the area, even back to the old Egyptian kingdom, so between the 21st and the 27th century BC. After founding Alexandria, Alexander never again returned to the site of his newly founded city and as we know died already 8 years later in 323 BC. His empire consequently fractured into smaller subunits governed by his respective generals. One of these generals was called Ptolemaios and he took possession of Egypt even bringing Alexander's body with him, for whom he had a tomb built in Alexandria. In 305 BC he declared himself pharaoh and declared Alexandria the new capital of his kingdom. And from that time onwards Alexandria would see an unprecedented growth where it would turn in the time span of about 100 years to be the largest city in the world of that time. Which means that by 200 BC, Alexandria measured as many as 500,000 inhabitants and during its peak even as many as 600,000. And please like this video and subscribe so that you won't miss any future videos on the fascinating era of the late Roman Empire. And please consider supporting our work on Patreon or via YouTube membership because the long term sustainability of this channel really depends on your support. YouTube is not really generous to such a niche topic about the late Roman Empire and the ad revenue from the videos is therefore really low. So in order to be long term sustainable I really need your support via Patreon or YouTube membership. I think Majorian would thank you for supporting a channel bearing his name. I certainly do. Gratias a Miki. 
The 3rd century BC was also the time when Alexandria saw the construction of many of its most grandiose monuments. The famous Pharos, for example, the lighthouse of Alexandria, was constructed between 284 and 246 BC. This one of the seven world wonders of antiquity would stand for around 1500 years before it was destroyed by an earthquake in the 14th century AD. Then we had the Serapion, where a new god was worshipped, Serapis, that was intended to unite both Greek and Egyptian pagan deities and thus to unify the Egyptian and Greek people of Alexandria. During these times, Ptolemy II reigned and it was also during his reign that the famous library of Alexandria was constructed, so during the same time as the Pharos from 284 to 246 BC. Here countless ancient scrolls were held, possibly as many as 400,000, equating to around 100,000 modern books. An incredible concentration of ancient knowledge. It sadly mostly burned down in the Roman Civil War in 48 BC, when the fire unintentionally spread from the harbor to the library. Attached was the Musaion, which would be the center of learning and teaching, and would attract many great minds of the ancient world. Many mathematicians, rhetoricians and philosophers would flock from all around the ancient world in order to teach or to be taught at the Musaion. Euclid himself would study geometry here and it was here also that the great Heron of Alexandria would construct many sophisticated machines, even coming as far as almost sparking an industrial revolution with his invention of a rotating steam engine precursor, the Aeolipile. The great Hypatia also teached at Alexandria as late as the early 5th century AD. By 100 BC, Egypt came more and more under Roman influence until by 30 BC, Egypt was finally incorporated into the growing Roman Empire. We can assume that the urban makeup of the city stayed quite constant for hundreds of years and already by 200 BC, the city must have had the appearance shown on this map here. The city was carefully planned and elongated in shape with a very large street passing from west to east called the Canobic Street. The Pharos was on an island in the north, the library and the Musaion near to the port, the Serapion to the southwest and of course the city also boasted dozens of other Greek and later Roman temples but also a large stadion later used also as a hippodrome for chariot races called the Lageion. It was possibly located also in the southwest near the Serapion. The city was of course surrounded by a very long city wall. As we can see, the city was about 5 kilometers long and about 2 kilometers wide, yielding a total surface area of about 10 square kilometers. So this means that ancient Alexandria also had an extremely high population density of 50 to 60,000 people per square kilometer, very comparable to ancient Rome or ancient Constantinople. The way ancient cities were able to achieve such extremely high population densities was by housing them in what is not so dissimilar to modern apartment buildings with multiple stories. These were called insulae in ancient Rome and they were quite similar in ancient Constantinople, so we can assume that in Alexandria too, the majority of people lived in these overcrowded insula type of apartment buildings, since otherwise such a high population density would not have been achievable. Fun fact, the highest ever achieved urban population density was in the Kowloon walled city, where 50,000 people lived on a surface area of only 210 by 120 meters. This corresponded to a population density of an incredible 1.93 million people per square kilometer. So even though the population densities of ancient Alexandria, Rome and Constantinople were very high, much higher population densities are attainable. 
During the time of the end of the Roman Republic and the birth of the Roman Empire, Alexandria must at some point have been surpassed by Rome regarding size and population, probably sometime in the 1st century BC. Yet still Alexandria remained extremely populous and impressive for hundreds of years. Even the Cyprian plague that raged strongly in Alexandria in the 250s AD, where it saw its population halved, could not end this magnificent city, as it would recover afterwards. After the 4th century AD, Constantinople rose quickly, and we then for a time had three very large cities in the Roman Empire around the year 400 AD, all measuring at least 500,000 inhabitants, Rome, Alexandria and Constantinople. It was during that time that the city saw religious riots occurring, in which a fanatic Christian mob would fight pagans who fortified themselves in the Serapion. But unfortunately this would not hinder the Christians of tearing down many pagan statues and damaging pagan temples. In 415 there came the absolute low point when these early Christian fanatics killed the aforementioned famous Hypatia of Alexandria. These events are depicted in the movie Agora, which despite of course not always being entirely accurate, is one of the very few movies about life in the late Roman Empire and how the rise of Christianity affected pagans. Overall it is much more historically accurate than a movie such as for example Gladiator and I can therefore highly recommend it. Even more so since there are almost no movies about the late Roman Empire. After the mid 5th century AD, Rome started to decline and the Western Roman Empire soon after dissolved. But the Eastern Roman Empire continued and still despite all this, Alexandria continued to shine. Many Neoplatonists were still teaching at Alexandria, as they also did at the old Platonic Academy of Athens, and this would continue even until the mid-6th century, until the Emperor Justinian, in one of his most intolerant acts, decided to defund this ancient thousand-year-old institution. In the early 7th century then, Alexandria briefly came under Persian rule in the disastrous Roman-Sassanian War in 619, only to be reconquered by the Eastern Romans under Heraclius a few years later, and only to then shortly later fall to the Arabs in 641. It was briefly recaptured in 645 by the Eastern Romans, only to then fall for good to the Arabs in that same year. Thus ended thousand years of Greek and Roman rule for Alexandria and the city afterwards underwent a strong cultural transformation over many centuries and grew in size and population until it became modern Alexandria that we know today. And if you are interested to learn more about the urban makeup of ancient Constantinople, you can watch this video here in the upper right corner. But if you are more interested in how exactly Rome must have looked when the last Roman emperors reigned there, you can watch the other video in the lower right corner. I say thanks again to all friends of Roman history, gratias amici imperi romani and bene valete.